Amen. Okay, we continue with our series on dealing with uncertainties. And uh, last week, uh, we, we tried to look at uh, a, an aspect of it, life without fear. And last week, we dealt with Judges chapter 6 from 11 to 13. And we mentioned three things last week that God sees you. God sees you. Your fears, he knows that you are afraid. Amen. He knows your concerns. He knows that even when you are in church, you are still afraid. Amen. He understands your fears. God sees you. Yeah, like for Gideon, he was running, he was, they were hiding his people. Uh, the Midianites were all over them. So they were hiding, afraid. But God was, he understood. He was, you know, despite all that they were, the situation that um, they were in, God was still interested in their case. And we said we must confront um, the uncertainty that God sees you who you really are, who you are, the, your, your, your potentials. He knows you more than you knew that, that you think you are. For Gideon, he thought he was, he was nobody. But God said, no, you are a mighty man of valor. You are a mighty warrior. So you may think that you are nothing and you are afraid, but God is saying, but this, this one is unconquerable. This one is more than COVID-19. Why is he afraid <laughs> like any other person? Amen? Are you getting it? it, it you are afraid, but God is saying, but this one ought not to be afraid. No, she, she's divinely immune. She's divinely what? Immune that this thing cannot, should not. This is the least thing that it should be running, running from. Hallelujah. Even though you are afraid, but God knows who you really are. Hallelujah. That was the second point we made, and we finished by saying that God understands your fears. He understands your fears. Now, this morning, we are continuing, and we're looking at how to conquer your fears. Now you're afraid. Now you know that God understands. Now God is saying that I'm more than what I'm afraid of. So now how do you conquer the fear that wants to intimidate you? How to conquer your fears in dealing with uncertainties? Let's pray in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you this morning because you are a good God. Once again, we've come as a people. We've come to hear your word. Lord, as we listen to your word, give us the grace to be doers of this, your word, in the name of Jesus. Let your word be a blessing unto us. Let your word heal, deliver, set captives free, transform lives, and save souls. Father, we thank you. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Conquering your fears. Judges chapter 6, verse 25 to 27. Judges 6, 25 to 27. It says, Now it came to pass the same night that the Lord said to him, Take your father's young bull, the second bull of seven years old, and tear down the altar. Now, you know the, the story before this, the same chapter we read last week, you know, and um, God has reminded him that he's a mighty man of valor and he's encouraged him to rise up. So God is instructing him now and he has asked all the questions. Is it me? Me that is from the, the least tribe, the youngest of my tribe? My father is nobody. So now God is saying, now rise up. You can follow up now. So now it came to pass the same night that the Lord said to him, now take your father's young bull. Your father, you think that is from the least tribe of, the, of that least clan, of that nation. The second bull of seven years old, tear down the altar of Baal that your father has and cut down the wooden image that is beside it. Now it's, now, now, now it's been instructed. Stand up. You can, you can your, your people may have, may, may be the least, they may have, uh, been in captivity, rise up, rise up, 26, and build an altar to the Lord your God on top of this rock in the proper arrangement. Take the second bull and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the image, which you shall cut down. So Gideon took ten men from among the seven servants 
and did as the Lord had said to him. But because he feared his father's household and the men of the city too much to do it by day, he did it by night. Hallelujah. Amen. Interesting story. Now you've heard God. You've heard God. God is saying this is the solution. And the solution is that you go to your father's house. You go to your village. You know the worship lifestyle of your village. You know your family. You know what your family is made of. You've grown up there. You have from day one. You know the sacrifices that they make. You know the kind of lifestyle, the idol um, worship style, everything. Now he has, he's instructing Gideon. I am with you. Remember we stopped last week. I am with you. Do not be afraid. Now he said, go down to your village, your father's house, and destroy the idols. Amen. Go down. Some of you, I know most of, most, most, I come from a village, I know the kind of idols that my village, the people worship. Amen. Now, I remember in, when I came into ministry, or when I knew that God was calling me into ministry, I remember very well, uh, I traveled down to, I was up here um, in the UK, I traveled down to the village, and I knew the idols that they worship. I knew my family idols. I knew that there were some, in, in part of my family compound, they call, yeah, there are some three sticks, three sticks like three microphones, dug to the ground, three, one like a triangle, one, one, then one. And we were born into that kind of, we saw those three things there. Trees, you no, know, hard kind of forestry that are strong, dug into the ground, they do things there, they, 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 they pour libations there. I've seen that when I was growing up in the village. So when I knew that I was being called into ministry and God kept showing me in one form or the other about these things, the picture. So when I knew that I was going into ministry in some form by the different revelations, I traveled down and I went to the, to the head of my, my eldest sister. And I said, where are those? First, I went to look at the place to see what I can, you know? And I wanted to, I just want to go maybe quiet. If I'm afraid, I will quietly pray over the place. Amen. Now, I've traveled from UK down to the village to look at these things so that if I get there, I will quietly, maybe if I'm afraid, if I can't withstand those village people, I will quietly pray all kind of prayer I can, you know. Uh, but I was of the determination that I would take the things out. So I went there and I didn't see the things. Of course, I've prayed over here before going, traveling over, and I asked my elder sister, where are those three sticks that we used to see here? In short, I was in that village for about 20 years or whatever before I left the country. Or the 30 years ago when I left the country. You no, know, there are some three sticks that are here, that, that, I mean, that used to be here in this particular spot. Where are they? Oh, she said somebody came and somewhere, somewhere, they removed them and took them to the forest. Hallelujah. Amen. First, God has already, in some form, answered my prayers while I was praying here. Amen. So by the time I got there, something has already happened. God is answering your prayers. Amen. So I didn't bother to go to the forest where they took them to. Amen. For me, I know that at least they've left a particular spot that you know that they were there over the years. And I came back and we started ministry. Our very first program, Divine Encounter, April, April 2009. We printed flyers here. And I, I happened to be in the village in March, my father's, my father's funeral. I was distributing flyers with my face, something like that, in the village for a program in, in Bradford. Amen. Some kind of foolishness, you will say. But because I just want to be, not to be afraid any longer. If I must succeed here, I, must deal, I, should deal with, I should be able to deal with some things back in the village. Why am I going this way today? Some of you need to rise up every midnight to deal with some certain things. Amen. Some of you need to take some serious steps. So first, the instruction was deal with the idols. God is instructing Gideon. Deal with the idols. Number one thing, three things I would share today and that's done for today. Visit the foundation of your fear. Amen. So the first thing is in conquering your fears is to what? 
visit the foundation of your fear. Judges 6, 27, where we read the New Living Translation. So Gideon took ten of his servants and did as the Lord had commanded. But he did it at night because he was afraid. Amen. He was afraid of the other members of his father's household. Maybe the brothers and sisters that have not seen God, they will revolt against him. Some of you are afraid of your family, your, your brothers and sisters. So you, you can't pray some certain prayers. You know that your family is you know, deep in idol worship, but you are still scared of one brother, one uncle that is saying that, no, this thing must be kept. Hallelujah. But he did it at night. Interesting. Whether night or whatever, he did it. Amen. He thought in the daytime they would see him doing it. So he went at night. Hallelujah. You too. Whether it's night or day, whether in fear, you will do it. Whatever step that you need to take to deliver your people, your asshole, you will do it in Jesus' name. May you be able to conquer that fear. This is the foundation of your fear. So while Gideon obeyed, he, he obeyed the instruction of God, but he did it in fear. He did it at night. He was afraid of his family and the people of the town. God wanted to show him that even that was a misplaced fear. Don't be afraid. Now, 2 Timothy 1, 7 tells us this quickly. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, three things quickly. Three or four, four scenarios. Four scenarios. Number one, what is fear and what is common sense? I, I, I saw a post recently, oh, are these people really people of faith? Or oh, where is faith in this? Where is faith in this? On our chapel of grace, uh, uh, Facebook, where is faith by wearing a shield or max or whatever? Where is faith? Hallelujah. That means you are not of people of faith. Is that what, that's what the person is trying to mean. Where is faith? And I got somebody sent me something this morning. I, I read it this morning. It says, when you look when you lock your doors at night, when you're about to sleep, you lock your doors, isn't it? You know, are you living in fear? But you just, you just have to lock your door, isn't it? And they say, that is common sense. Amen? When you lock your door, at, is it because you're afraid? Or is it because it's the right thing to do? Amen? So if you can lock your door at night, then what is the shield matter? If they say we are shield, these two will come and go. Amen. Hallelujah. So, the, so his point was that it is just common sense. Wearing a mask, social distancing, and washing are also simple common sense in this season. In this what? Season. It is not because you are afraid. Amen. But it is just common sense. So let's continue to be responsible as believers in this season. In the name of Jesus. Protect yourself and others wherever and whenever you can. Put safety first and keep people safe. Hallelujah. That is a word for every one of us. Amen. In conquering of fears, faith is key too. There was this story about some villagers. They, they were farmers and they, they were they decided to pray for rain. They, 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 they agreed so that, that as a village, we will pray for rain. And when they, they fixed the time so that the whole village can come and pray. So on the day of prayer, everyone gathered. But only one small boy came with umbrella. Hallelujah. Amen. You get the point there? The small boy had the faith that rain will fall. So he came with what? His umbrella. That is what? Faith. So everyone gathered, we fixed that we're going to pray that rain should fall for our crop.
Hallelujah. to behave the way Gideon acted. Amen. So, number one, this is the foundation of your fear. Number two, stand strong. Stand strong. Stand strong. So, what happened when Gideon went and destroyed the altars of the family? Then the people wanted to kill Gideon because of what he has done. Judges 6, verse 28 to 30. And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, remember he did it in the night hour, there was the altar of Baal torn down. Gideon has now destroyed the altar of Baal because they have to be purified before they can face the, media, you know, the Midianites in this war to free his people. So he first dealt with the altar, his family altars, so that nothing will work against them. Judges 6, 28 to 30. The people, when the men of the city arose early in the morning, there was the altar of Baal turned down, and the wooden image that was beside it was cut down. And the second bull was being offered on the altar, which had been built. So they said to one another, Who has done this thing? And when they had inquired and asked, they said, Gideon, the son of Joash, has done this thing. Then the men of the city said to Joash, that's his father, bring your son that he may die. Hallelujah. Because he has torn down the altar of Baal and because he has cut down the wooden image that was beside it. Hallelujah. Interestingly, Gideon's father said, if Baal is indeed a god, he can take care of himself. If your God that my father, my son has destroyed is really a God, let the God himself kill my son. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I, I may not go into that when we're younger. When we're younger, we're into some kind of, you know, what young people would do. You go to the city, you want to get what you want from the system. Get what you want. You, you are going for a business. You two, you are. You two, you go over and, you know, you work hard to, you know, if your friend is going for a job, you too go, go for a job. And you do, you, you are strong enough to be able to get your way through. You are not seeking that. Nobody can bully you. That kind of lifestyle. Nobody can bully you from what you want. That kind of, if you get the point I'm making. Then some people feel that, you no, know, we were too aggressive. 
And knowing that uh, my father was a simple man, they would come to my, they would come to my father and say, your, your sons are too aggressive. And he would tell them, I am a simple man, but leave my sons to be who they are. Amen. Don't because I'm simple, you will go and intimidate them outside and they will not be able to stand among their peers. Are you getting the point? So Gideon's father is saying, my son has destroyed your idols. And you are saying, I should bring my son so that you can. No, if your idols are really idols, strong gods, let your idols kill my son. Leave the idols to fight for themselves. Hallelujah. And that should be the attitude of some parents, of most of us. Don't let your children be intimidated when they are outside. Amen. Teach them to be strong. Teach them to be strong in the name of Jesus. That you have in the verses 31 to 32. So Gideon's father is threatening to kill anyone. If you read the verse 31, 32, he threatened to kill anyone who will arm Gideon. He said, if your idols are idols, let's read it. 31. But Joah said to all who stood, what against him? Will you plead your Baal, your idol? Will you save him? Let the one who will plead for him be put to death by morning. If he is a God, let him plead for himself because his altar has been torn down. And my prayer is that you will not be afraid. Stand strong. The parent, his father, stood strong. Don't let fear control you. First John 5 verse 14 says, this, let, Now let this confidence that we have in him now, this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Philippians 1, 6 says, we must be confident of this very thing. That he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. What are we saying? The Lord that has kept us up to this day, he will see us through at this pandemic. In the name of Jesus. Don't panic be strong. Amen? Don't panic, but remain strong. The third point I will quickly look at is the breakthrough. Now came the breakthrough for Gideon. Now came the breakthrough for Gideon. Go to the next chapter, Judges 7, verse 1 to 3. Then Jerubal, that is Gideon, and all the people who were with him, rose early and they come beside. Now he has destroyed the idols. Of his people. They rose early and they camped beside the well of Harod, so that the camp of the Midianites was on the north side of them by the hill of March in the valley. And the Lord said to Gideon, The people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Least Israel will claim glory for itself because will claim glory for itself against me, saying, my own hand has saved me. Now, therefore, proclaim in the hearing of everybody, tell the people, whoever is fearful and afraid, let him turn and depart at once from Magalia. And 22,000 of the people returned, and 10,000 remained. Remember the story? It went down up to what? 300. Amen. Do not be afraid. Conquer your fears. Go, now, now the, this same Gideon who was afraid, who said he was nobody. Now, by the time he get to 300, he was now leading the same fearful nobody Gideon is now leading an army, a troop of 300 soldiers to go and fight. Amen. First, you know, God has to downsize to 300. Judges 7 verse 15. And so it was when Gideon heard the telling of the dream, you know, and its interpretation, that he worshipped, he returned to the camp of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord has delivered the camp of Midian into their hand. The story is interesting here because when he was leading 300, God said, no, go up to the edge of the valley, you will say. 
and as he, to, so that you can have a look against, you know, on the, your enemy. As he got there, he heard the people, he heard a man saying that I dreamt a, you know, a dream and that, you know, that in, in summary, that a, 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 a little army, in summary, came and defeated us. So Gideon is now going for war and he heard the people without them knowing someone had a dream and was telling the dream, interpreting the dream that no, in I God showed to me that some little army in some form I'm, I'm, I'm trying to put it in a way that you understand now, came in and defeated our mighty army. So with this knowledge now Gideon went back and became bold. That God has already what? Shown to the people that they will be defeated. I'll tell you this story, and for those of us that have been here, you know, they've heard about it. 2009, I was traveling across nations, and I was at an airport in Lagos, midnight. And I was from around midnight, 11 p.m., the flight arrived 11 p.m. to 12 midnight. And someone came to pick me, a French driver came to pick me up. And we were going to the car packed up in one aspect of the, of the one corner of the airport, dark area. So going to the airport, darker area, the area, the gang boys were all over the place. And they were coming after, they come all over, they are all over the airport. They are all over the airport. They are coming after me, come. And the more they were coming and we were moving towards the car, which was in the dark area, I was getting afraid with my few pounds for, to take care of father's funeral and all that, you know, on my pocket and with my luggage and all that. The more the boys were coming after me and, and the driver was moving towards where the car was, a darker area, I was saying, Lord, have mercy. If these boys come and you know, pick my luggage and run, what can I do? But the, the more we were going, at some point, one by one, they were leaving. Then one asked, sir, are you a man of God? Are you a pastor? That was the word. Are you a pastor? And I looked at him, still being afraid. And I said, why do you ask? He said, because I can see the fire of God all around you. Hallelujah. Amen. At that moment, I became bold. At that moment, what did I do? I became bold. Me, ordinary man, someone is seeing fire all around me. Amen. The next thing I said, please carry the luggage, take it to the car, follow the driver. Amen. And God, yeah, give him what they normally do, give some change. Thank you for that. And we left. Amen. Gideon acted based on that information when he heard the revelation of what God has already um, gone ahead to reveal to the people. What are we saying this morning? There is power in revelation. Amen. When you don't know the way out, ask God, say, Lord, show me what may even be the outcome of this endeavor. So that I, will not, I don't need to be afraid in a, in, 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 in a battle that I'm already the winner. Of course, it's already there in this, in this world. That everyone that is born of God overcome this world. And this is the victory that overcomes this world. Beyond the world, revelation, you know, when God has shown it to you, it, people may doubt whatever you, have, you may have to say. But because you have seen God, you have seen it in a vision, in a dream, by prophecy or whatever, and it has been confirmed, that will embolden you. Amen. May God reveal to you who you really are in the name of Jesus. David said in Psalm 105, verse 5, as we close, don't you ever forget his miracles and marvels. The Passion Translation. Hold to your heart every judgment he has decreed. David walked on that revelation. When he freed Goliath, David said, no, this God is much more than this Goliath. This God enabled me to deal with a lion. This God has enabled me to deal with a bear. So therefore, this Goliath is, will fall like one of them. 
I will deal with this Goliath. He said, I will, you uncircumcised Philistine, I will cut off your neck. Hallelujah. Has God been ever good to you? If God has been good to you, the same God will see you through this season. In the name of Jesus. No, at times I, I, I just, you know, sometimes I just, yes, we are all very, very careful. But sometimes I just get on with life. I just sometimes, in one way or the other, I just get on with life. It's enough of this fear. Amen. But I still have to take the precautions. I would just say it's enough of this, this nonsense. This nonsense. You come and you have to wear all that and put all that. Yes, we have to do that. But within you is your inner fear that is very key. Don't be, ever be afraid inside. People said this thing has killed more people. Fear has killed more people than even the virus. Amen. It may be not be right to say it here, but they expected the worst from Africa. But the people are rugged. Amen. The people are what? Whether knowingly or unknowingly, they just what? Ruggedly what? They have no other hope. They have no other hope. So they just what? Ruggedly live life. And life is going on. And very soon, this shall all be over. In the name of Jesus. As I conclude, Romans 1, 17 says, they just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. The just shall live by faith. Let's rise up. Amen. I want to announce to someone that in this season, you will testify in the name of Jesus. No, I love the story as it ended. When Gideon had that revelation, he came back and he worshipped God. He came back what? And Gideon worshipped God. He came back when he heard the testimony of that revelation. He came back and worshipped God. This week, earlier this week, you know, I've been worshipping God. If, if for the kids, for, for Gideon, judge, for, in Judges 7.15. And so it was when Gideon heard the telling of the dream, Judges 7.15. And so it was when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and his interpretation that he worshipped he returned to the camp of Israel. He returned to his own camp and said, Arise, for the Lord has delivered the camp of the Midian into our hand. Hallelujah. Arise. Throughout this week, I recorded a song. And I've been worshipping God. I taught my entire family about that song. Amen. Because I, we are, I was believing God as a family. We were trusting God. And the only way I can express it is to just worship God. Hallelujah. You too worship God. So let's begin to worship God this morning as we close.